Hi, and welcome back to Channel 4 News. I'm your host, Scott Daly, and today I have with me the man responsible for making math as we know it easier. The man who found easier ways to solve math problems so we don't have to. I'm speaking, of course, about Scottish mathematician John Napier, who's sitting right here next to me. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing very well today, thank you. I know it's been a very long time since you uh, made contributions to the fields of mathematics, among other things, but would you mind telling our audience your life story, the story of how you were able to do what you did? Well, it all started when I was a very young laddie. I was born on February 1st in the year 1550 to my parents in a castle called Merchinston near Edinburgh in Scotland. My parents' names were Archibald and Janet, and my dad was only 16 when my mom had me. Very interesting. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about your childhood? When I was very young, I was tutored, but when I reached the age of 13, I went to a college of St. Anne Salvador's at the great city of St. Andrews. When I was there, I began to be interested in the study of theology, but the education was pretty bad at the time, so I went to Europe to study there for a while. I came back to Scotland in 1571 with a fluent learning of Greek. Sounds quite fascinating. Any other details about your life that you'd like to share? The year after I came back from Europe, I married a young gal by the name of Elizabeth Sterling, and we had two children until she died. I think in 1579, I was devastated. Then I got married to another gal named Agnes Chisholm, and then we had 10 more children. Interesting. Can you tell us about your mathematical work? Well, one of the things I thought math needed the most was an easier way to solve problems. So I decided to dedicate myself to that. In the year 1614, I published Morithiki Logothariumorum Canohisnis Discripito. And I put lots and lots of tables and things called natural log logarithms. I got to discover theorems after I spent many long nights doing calculations of astronomy. I realized after nearly a score of years that the big numbers can be shown by using powers, as they are called. I also started the practice of using decimal points in certain numbers. I think that people have used them as they should have, and my work has paid off. I think it's very neat. Do you have anything else to say about your mathematical career? Well, I revised my log log logarithms in 1615 with the great Henry Briggs, who made a new table and methinks provided more computational advance known as exponential notation, to make calculations by your hands faster. More recently, I also tried to improve lattice multiplication by using some number numbering rods made of ivory. You mean Napier's bones? Ha, huh, what say ye? Oh, um, the ivory rods are known as Napier's bones because they're made of ivory. Anyway, you may continue. Anyway, the way I use these ivory rods, they are not bones was that I put the rods next to one another to make multiplication like addition and division more like subtraction. I also numbered the rods to arrange them better. So the way they would be set up was on a board, and the left side of the board had numbers one through nine in squares, and there are four rods, each with nine squares. The first one had a single number, the second had twice as much, the third had thrice as much, and it continues to nine. All of the squares in columns two through nine are diagonally divided. And well, you'll have to see it for yourself. Uh, Mr. Tech Guy, can you put that up on the screen for our audience? Thank you very much. Now, John, I understand that you were and are still pretty controversial for your beliefs on religion and magic. Could you tell us about that? Oh, yes, I will. And the book of Revelation gives lots and lots of clues about when the world will end and I calculated it to end in about the year 1700. We will see if I'm right, and I most surely am. Oh, uh, that was 320 years ago. What? I thought I was right, even math told me so. Everyone knows you can always trust math, am I right? Um, no, that's not exactly what I would consider math. That's probably more of a uh, conspiracy theory than anything else. How could this happen? I wrote a plain discovery of the whole revelation of St. John back in 1593 about all this, and now you're telling me this is all wrong? I even wrote it in English for everybody to hear and believe. Even though they couldn't really know when it would happen, I still wanted to know when it would happen. 
We'll be taking a quick break, and when we return, more with John Napier and his flawed vision of the future. How could I? And we're back with John Napier, who just shared how he believed that the apocalypse and Matt were directly related. John, are you all right? Mostly. I just need some whiskey to cool down and my, help my spirit and my very swelling feet. Oh. Uh, that's actually, I think you might have a medical condition called, uh, gout, which is how Anyway, in 1617, I faced my death in the old castle Merchantston in Scotland. I've been hiding ever since, until you asked me to come out for... Wait, what is all this madness? Um, this all is just technological advances in the last 400 years. I don't care for it. I will strike you down with my weapons I prepared for war against the Spanish. I, I'm still terrified about that. That's the whole reason I wrote my book on Revelation. I'll take my spider out of the box of the All right, well, I guess I'll really never find out what kinds of things he was really into, but. I'm so right. All right. Anyway, this has been an interesting interview with the renowned mathematician and sorcerer John Napier. For more information, just visit our website and tune in next time to see more people of history once thought to be long gone, but still alive in the flesh, telling us about their lives. For Channel 4 News, this is Scott Daly. Wait, wait, don't!